Everybody poops, around a pound a day in fact, and everybody wants a clean butt. These two facts were constantly at odds until the 6th century AD, when the Chinese used their papermaking prowess to create sheets meant for doing your dirty work. In 1857, a man named Joseph Gaetti created the first commercial toilet paper. And today, Americans use almost three rolls per person every week. But good old TP has come a long way since then, and you might be surprised at how much research and development goes into each roll. Toilet paper might seem like a simple product, but it has to fit some tough criteria. It has to stay strong while it's the only thing between your hand and your poop, even if it gets wet in the process. But it also has to break apart pretty quickly to avoid mucking up your plumbing. And of course, it has to be reasonably soft because your tush is precious. But paper tends to get less strong as it gets softer and vice versa. Companies that design your potty paper are constantly seeking out a better balance between these desirable properties so they can wipe the competition. I recently talked to researchers at Procter & Gamble about the secret sauce that helps Charmin keep your rear end feeling fresh. And by secret sauce, I mean secret fake poop. Charmin's labs are bursting with old, new, and so new we're not allowed to film at tech for testing TP properties. Machines are perfectly calibrated to test precisely how much force it takes, for example, to break wet and dry toilet paper with an object about the width of a finger. There are even machines to test exactly how paper will drape when it hangs off the roll. These tasks, which companies like PNG conduct on both their own products and competitors to see how they're measuring up, are increasingly being ported over to robots. We got to watch one bot whose only purpose in life is to take tiny strips of toilet paper and place them in a machine that slowly tugs them until they break. It's not sexy, but without this rigorous lab work, companies would have no way of really knowing how their paper would perform when you got down to business. Tests like this have allowed PNG to refine their paper making process and make it more eco-friendly. It uses 18% less water per unit than it did in 2010, but there's still a lot of work to do. A recent report by the Natural Resources Defense Council gave Charmin Ultrasoft an F in sustainability for using 100% new paper instead of recycled. PNG isn't alone in relying on old growth forests to make their products. But for now, the fact is that if you're buying toilet paper that's marketed as soft and, well, it feels soft, it's probably not coming from super sustainable sources. P&G told us that while almost all of their inner cores and paper packaging come from recycled sources and recycled paper has many great uses, toilet tissue is not one of them. So you have to decide how soft is soft enough for your butt. And boy, do most people care about toilet paper being soft. Charmin relies on a fleet of sensory testers to rate its products against prototypes in competition on qualities you can't really test for in a lab, like how expensive a roll looks, or how cushy it feels, or how bright it is, even how it smells. These workers undergo six months of training for the job, and only 50% of them develop enough sensitivity to get hired. But no matter what roll you throw in your cart, plush, sturdy, soft, one thing is always true. Toilet paper needs to stay together until it hits the water, and then for a little bit of time afterwards. But then it needs to break apart fast. At PNG, there's a flushability lab to make sure TP does just that. It's exactly what it sounds like. Of course, when it comes time for your precious toilet paper to enter your septic or municipal sewer system, there's often something a little extra coming along for the ride. It's poop. Luckily, NASA has a fake poop called Feclone designed to test astronaut facilities that stands in for real turds as TP flies through the clear pipes of the PNG flush lab. But what if you need your fake poop to do more than just flush like the real thing? Wow, okay, there's no not gross way to say this. What if you also need it to smear like the real thing? PNG started using Feclone in 1994, and for a while it was an all-purpose airsats effluence. But it didn't interact with skin the way real poop does. It feels more like sticky clay. In 2010, the company started working on an artificial BM that has the same surface energy, fluid dynamics, and adhesion to skin as the real the result is made of food-grade ingredients and even comes in a variety of textures, from diarrhea to constipation. It's got everything but the smell. 
You might be wondering why you've never seen this secret fake poop. On television, companies use all sorts of blue goo because it pops and because it doesn't resemble anything you might actually produce on the toilet to show off a paper's wiping prowess. The same people who designed those wonderfully ridiculous experiments to compare a brand to some nameless competitor had to decide to show you that paper can wipe your poop real good without actually showing you anything that looks like poop because humans are ridiculous prudes. The real poop, by which I mean the fake poop, shows up in one-on-one -on -one qualitative interviews where researchers probe potential consumers about their bathroom habits and observe them using the product, but not on their butts. They do this to take notes on wiping behavior and effectiveness. These questions are usually asked in private where subjects are presumably less likely to get so flustered that they totally forget how they wipe their butts and also where they're not being filmed by their peers. Thinking about bowel movements normal, mm -hmm. how often do you think you would go in a day or given a week? Do you have a routine of when you go and have a bowel movement? How do you use your toilet paper and how do you take it off the roll? Can you describe to me what your motions are when you're wiping? Um, the In addition to the quantitative lab tests and highly trained sensory tester surveys, companies like P&G gather notes from these super personal one-on-one -on -one interviews so that they can get as much data on toilet paper as possible. They've even done surveys focused on the visually impaired because people who can't look down at paper to see if it's coming away clean are better able to articulate what a clean butt feels like. I was not able to articulate this. So how do you know when you're clean? Um, you just know. <laughs> so the next time you wipe your butt, think about all the trees, robot-powered experiments, embarrassing questionnaires, fake poop, and hours of sensory testing that went into creating that plush roll. Every sheet is the result of precious R&D and resources. Those plush, soft rolls that don't use any recycled paper? You're supposed to need fewer sheets to get the same job done. Just because you flush it doesn't mean you shouldn't appreciate it and buy and use it wisely. That's part of what Charmin is trying to accomplish by conducting all of these tests. So if softness is important to you, we understand. But make sure you slow your roll accordingly.